Sup, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I got Patrick in the back. I got Sarah next to me. We were talking about the way, way back. Okay. And we got nifty sunglasses to show for it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's better than the first premiere I saw of it. We got uh, little, like, cozies for cans, which is not as exciting. Oh, not nearly as No. Uh, uh, so. it, it should be noted that we got out of a pre-screening, so do we... Technically a pre-screening, but the movie's technically been released. Yeah. And so... Do we want to keep this a spoiler-free? Uh, I'm going to compromise. Let's do, like, the first five or so minutes spoiler-free, and then we'll and give them we'll a warning, and then we'll get into Cause it. Because it's, it's weird that it's being released... Um, it's already released, but it's not being released commercially. Like, they're doing different markets at different times. Yeah, like, it gets, it gets like, wide release on the 26th. Yeah. So that's like, a very interesting marketing strategy. Yeah. Well, it, it works, apparently, because our theater was packed. Yeah. With a very receptive, fun audience, who might I add? <laughs> um, even though it was receptive and fun, it's still a notch below the first time I saw it. Really? Yeah. That, that's, that's worth knowing it's the second time you've seen this. you got to see second. Yeah, uh, second time. Yes. And Patrick has earned his place by getting us the second, free t- second set of free tickets. So. Yeah. What? With bitchin' sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With free bitchin' sun- sunglasses. I feel like a Comic Con already. Uh, <laughs> prices us college students can afford. Exactly. <laughs> so let me get my bag of ramen noodles in the back <laughs> <laughs> and get my seven up. We can get this party started. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we should actually talk about the movie. So. Uh, for those who haven't heard this movie, and I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't, uh, Way Way Back is much more of an indie film with uh, Steve Carell, not starring, but he is uh, plays a big part in this. Mm-hmm. I would, if I had to categorize him, I would say he's the main antagonist. Yeah, it's Steve Carell. Like everybody kept saying, "Oh, it's a Steve Carell movie." It's I'll not. Like this. A Steve it's Carell not. Movie. He's he's in it. He very much plays against his typical typecast. No, yeah. and it worked very well. Again, without giving anything away, uh, this is very much a coming of age teenager story. Yeah, but uh, not an overly cheesy one. No, and. It it wasn't. It like, uh, of course, it went, you go through the kind of usual cliches. I mean, the thing with movies nowadays, and I was realizing this as I was watching it, is pretty much every idea has been done before. Yes. Yeah. So it all comes down to how well you do the idea now. Mm-hmm. Yes. And for all intents and purposes, I thought it did it very, very well here. Oh, I think so too. I agree. Like, uh, the thing that's. The thing I like about this movie, I think it kind of captured the teenage brain much more than a lot of other movies are, because quite frankly, I was a lot like this around that age, because I was kind of an asshole when I was a teenager. <laughs> I'll be the first to it, and my mother would be the first to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I was, I was kind of the same way, because you know what? Teenage years are confusing. They're, you're, yeah. you're angry, you're confused, your brain is doing all kinds of weird shit that you can't possibly control or explain. You you feel awkward and out of place and like you don't belong anywhere. You're learning. That's pr- like uh, there's so many things going on with your brain around the teenage years. Just so many different fi- like different fibers and neurons. I'm not. I only know the very basics of what actually happens. It's worth noting. But uh, it's like so. It's like it's con- it's a confusing time. And I thought the movie did a very good job of capturing, or at least the actor did a good job of capturing that. In my mm-hmm. opinion, like because I was that way too. I was angry. I was confused. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't know what the hell to think. You're just coming to wear the world for the first time. Yeah, and exactly. I'd like to point out that the the character that that Michael was just referring to is not the most talkative <laughs> character. So I appreciated the the subtlety to his. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. I was a little worried when this movie started out because I noticed a lot of cliches kind of going into yeah. it. Like like the shy main character who doesn't really say much. The annoying bitch stepsister. The uh, evil stepdad and the n- not belligerent stepmother, I guess. Yeah. Are, are we getting into to spoiler territory? I think we're just giving the baseline for the plot, so I okay. think we're still in safe territory. Okay, just, yeah. just making sure. Yeah. But it's like... Uh, I mean, if you've seen the trailer, I'll get, talk about the basic plot uh, without giving anything away. Basically, what happens is uh, Steve Carell's character, uh, what's his name? Ter- uh, Ter- Trent. Trent. Uh, it's dating uh, Duncan. Is it Duncan, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm still terrible at names. Uh, Duncan's mom. So he takes him down to his summer home. And where did this movie take place? I think it was the Jersey Shore. Because they, they oh, showed God. that they did have a little bit of a drive. <laughs> That, and that's they, why, he why a, Trent's daughter was such a bitch. Yeah, he had a... When they were driving away, you could tell they had a New York license plate. Mm. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. and then, I mean, a, Jersey, sh- drives a f- uh, Jersey Shore is a fair drive from New York, so I'm, I would imagine New York. Okay, fair enough. Oh, yeah, they said uh, they were from... Yeah, it was, I think, Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a horrible feeling from the back of my left eyebrow to the bottom of my right toe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So what happens is, once they go there, of course, he's a very socially awkward kid, so he tries to find ways to rele- uh, get released, so he ends up joining an amusement park, 
run by uh, a water park. Water park, sorry, uh, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell, uh, who is really fun in this. Yes, very much so. Um, I liked him a lot better in this than I did in Iron Man 2, and I'm not quite sure why, because it's kind of the same character. Uh, I guess he's a little more like he's much more likable in this one for starters. Mm -hmm. For one, he's not playing the villain. Yeah, because he <laughs> and, plays like a legitimate good guy. Yeah, and, you know? the, and the other thing is like the jokes he says are actually funny. Yes, <laughs> and he delivered them them well. And yes, I am wearing these for the whole thing. I even well, expect you to wear them for the rest of the week, Aunt Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing these to Comic Con. Are you kidding? I don't have any sunglasses. Uh, I know if I can get. I just wanted to to take my mine off while we were talking about. Sam Rockwell. Uh, I actually forgot that he was in Iron Man 2. Um, and so the main thing that I, I know him from <laughs> is from another indie film called Con Conviction, which was a drama based on a true story. And this was a different character uh, than, than he played in that film. So I, I really enjoyed seeing his, his range. I mean, he, yes, he does kind of have a type that... He plays, but it's a very likable type. He, he he's very much the older brother you want to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like he does very, play a very good job playing that supportive good guy that you, you that kind of reaches out to the outcasts, which is appreciated, especially again during teenage years when you don't know who the fuck you are, you don't know what the hell you want, and that's probably gonna stick with you until at least your mid twenties <laughs> <laughs> or longer, depending or longer. on if you're a late bloomer or not. <laughs> Everyone's different, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, it is, it is a very good coming of age tale, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so if I think that's as much we can say without going to spoilers, so I would say definitely check this out if you can find it anywhere. Yes. Uh, and when it comes to Marvel release in a couple weeks, I think like the twenty sixth is getting wide release. Definitely track it down and go check it out because I'd say it's definitely worth seeing. Probably better than anything else that's in theaters right now. And I. I told you indie movies are, are typically better. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, there, there's a Unless it's a Miyazaki movie, most people don't care about indie movies. <laughs> well, there's a reason why before this year I mostly saw indie movies. I guess I shouldn't judge that, though, because we do get a lot... We did get a lot of reviews for uh, Jackie Brown, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Not Jackie Brown, what the hell is Philly that? Brown. Philly Brown, I was close. <laughs> Entirely different movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, one's a Tarantino film. Yes. It, anyway, so... Full spoilers from here on in. Uh, oops. Yeah, so pretty much what happens is, again, it captures the adolescent confusion phase, I thought, pretty well, uh, especially when it turns out the fact that, of course, the kid's a child, he's a child of divorce, so obviously you have that crap laying on. It turns out his dad doesn't want him. His his dad, who is in San Diego with the new younger girlfriend. Yeah, which I, I kind of saw that coming, because yeah. like, it kind of was like, oh, he's younger, but, you know, he says he's got stuff work, worked out, but I'll go see him when he's done. It's like, oh... We're going that route, are we? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I <laughs> well, felt really bad for him. Yeah, the naive. Oh, that's just being... Oh, the young. I feel like I'm one well, of those old jackasses. Barricade Mary D. <laughs> <laughs> we knew what the hell Rugrats was. <laughs> There's actually some very disturbing fan theories about Rugrats. And... There's a lot of disturbing fan theories about everything. Fair point. You just hear the one about Courage of the Cowardly Dog. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Another time. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so it's like, and then of course, like, it turns out uh, Steve Carell is cheating on his mom, and his mother, mom doesn't want to admit it, and eventually it's... Duncan's mom, not Duncan's his own mom. mom. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, and and Duncan, at a, a 4th of July clam bake barbecue beach party... Then he just makes this huge calls, scene. ...calls out Trent on, on everything, and try... I, I could tell he was do, mostly doing this out of love and concern for... His mom, but he was also angry too, of course, for obvious reasons. Yeah, going back to Alice Confusion, all I think is like, dude, there are better times for this. Yeah. Yes, and... but uh, he was trying to help his his mom out from his teenage perspective. Yeah, but also he didn't want to ruin the thing he had going at the water park. Yeah. Because if you notice, he he catches the um his mom's boyfriend with the other chick, and he waits like a week because he caught her at the Fourth of July party, but it wasn't until the other party, like a week later, that he actually said something. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and of course, it's like the water park is the only place where he feels accepted. Yeah. So that's where why he keeps wanting to go back. And again, like the search for acceptance is a very understandable one. I think most people can relate to it in some way. Yeah. Or at least I can. I don't know. Uh, speaking from my, from my own perspective, but uh, it's like it's kind of universal thing. So it's like especially again, especially as teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you go the whole no one understands me crap. We all yeah. we've all been through it. Hell, I've been through it. I yes. Still 
struggle with it sometimes, admittedly. But me too. Yes. But anyway, there's no way to talk without saying like an angst-ridden teenager. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> because the main protagonist is an angst-ridden teenager. And I still hate that word. <laughs> Protagonist? No, I. <laughs> yes, I hate the word protagonist. I hate all heroes. <laughs> Let the villain reign. <laughs> uh, no, angst. It's just a word that is. I always. You were the one who brought it up. I did. I did because in some cases where it applies, and <laughs> especially on topic of teenagers, it always gives a pop up, which I think always. I never liked that word because I always felt like it undermined things. Because, granted. Most people are assholes when they're teenagers. I think that kind of comes with the territory. But at the same time, I don't much. I don't really like undermining what yeah. they're going through because again, it's a confusing time. It's easy to undermine it when you're older and you've been through it, but when you're going through that, it's hard as hell. <laughs> I'm just yeah. again, that's just my opinion, but I think it's most people will probably agree with me. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. I never like that word. Cause I always felt like tried to summarize it nice and neatly when it's like it's an ugly fucking process. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's an ugly process. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> but the but the movie captured it well. Yeah, that's the movie, the that's, that's my point. I'm trying to make. The movie did a good job, and I liked what I really enjoyed about the movie. And I didn't notice this necessarily the first time. Was that the camera was a little bit darker, even in the daytime scenes at his uh, family's house. Yes. It was like oh. darker and more like kind of desolate. Yeah. And then like, when it went to the water park, it was so vibrant and lovely. Me being super jealous because <laughs> when I, my family we would go to this little beach community, not for a whole summer, but for a week or two here, and we you know, rented a house up there. We didn't have our own, but we rented it. So I know that I, I could relate to the childhood experience of going up to this like beach town where I didn't know anybody. You see the same people every year and it was a tiny little town, but we our our water park up there was like a water slide, a pool. We granted we did have go-karts and roller coasters, but they just like went bankrupt. And all of a sudden, like it just went into like decay <laughs> and it's shut down now. So to be like, Oh, there, they have this nice water park. I'm kind of a little jealous. <laughs> nice. No, the only, fucking music park we have by my house is Gilroy Gardens. Oh boy. Yeah, because you know, you like that little caterpillar ride so many times before that gets old. Yeah. Any, anyway, but... Well, there, there, <laughs> there's not any amusement park in, in, in Monterey. The most that, or the closest to it is, is, is the county fair. But year. you're also in Monterey. <laughs> yes. That's kind of the caveat there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we also get like the wharf and the aquarium and the beach and all that crap. We Gilroy has nothing. <laughs> there is fucking nothing in Gilroy except Gilroy Gardens. It's a little shitty amusement park. Not many locals. And onions. Ig and, onions. And, and garlic. 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 Sorry, garlic. Not garlic. And I should know this. Not, not many locals go to the aquarium except during free week. Fair enough. Uh, Anyway, back to the actual movie <laughs> instead of bitching about her hometowns. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about before? Oh, yeah. Uh, Patrick, you and I should probably talk about our little bonding experience. Yeah. Watching the movie. Because uh. <laughs> uh, I don't know about Patrick here, but I have had a pretty shitty love life. <laughs> and uh, I can't. No, what was the first part? The where... first part was like, uh, there's this awkward. The, uh, there's a, the neighbors in the movie. Yes. Uh, the first part was like the younger daughter, of course, she's not attractive. Of course, she's going to fall for the awkward person, uh, which is, yeah. of course, like, that always happens. Yeah, she was the least bitchy girl in her circle of bitchy friends. As every, like, awkward teenager in the audience goes, bullshit, <laughs> that doesn't happen. The awkward seduction method doesn't work. I've tried it for years. It's never worked. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder why I'm single. I'm telling this to a camera. Uh, anyway, so the first part was like, it's like awkward. He's not really talking to me. He's not really making eye contact and all that crap. And the kids like, and the, the, and the, the girl, girl just like talking about conversation. And he goes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he goes, all right. And then he goes, it's really warm. <laughs> <laughs> to continue the conversation with the girl in the deck, he just like she's walking away. He's like, it's gonna be a hot summer. And she's like, oh, he, it's like, oh, I thought we were done. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he resorted to talking about the weather. And, and then and like, it was just so painfully awkward. And you and I just looked at each other. Goes, yeah. uh, story of my life. And yeah, fist pounding. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was our bonding moment over like okay this is this is awkward talking to girls kind of and then it happened again, yeah, uh, again. two thirds of the way through the movie when uh, he leans in for the kiss and keep in mind this is after the uh, after the big blowout uh, scene at the uh, the Fourth of July barbecue literally right after uh, and he he leans in for the kiss and she kind of backs away and you hear every guy in the audience goes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think so many people had been there. That, that, not necessarily that particular moment, but like the the misinterpreting like signals and it's yeah. Just like, oh, and boy, you and I, I again that one up. You and I, you started leaning me. I said at first, it was like story of my life, and I just smiled. I didn't even do the fist bump. I was just smiling at that point. I was just like, dang. You were grinning ear to ear. Yeah, M Michael and I bonded more. We just bond with the films as we go on. Apparently, yeah. This is like our third go around now, and he's 
surprisingly see me in good moods and movies, <laughs> astonishingly. The free tickets help. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, I would like to point out that I um, I was very surprised. The first time I saw this movie, I'm like, oh, it's great. Who did the screenplay? Screenplay were two of the actors in the movie who were given very nerdy roles, one of which was the uh, the nerdy guy with the glasses who looks like Kip from Napoleon Dynamite, not the same guy. Oh, uh, the guy was in Community, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, so, the, the dean is in this movie. Yeah, so he's he's one of the screenwriters, and then the other screenwriter was the, the uh, like, Blonde haired surfer lifeguard guy. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 they got the crooked teeth. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So those were the two uh, screenwriters, I think directors too. Oh, like, cool. I'm going to be surprised. Like, the guy uh, the guy from Community is actually a pretty good screenwriter. I mean, yeah. did you see the episode he directed in oh, Com like, yeah. Community last season? It was like the best episode of the season. I heard about it. <laughs> it was pretty, I heard it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, I liked how they, they gave themselves like kind of nerdy, awkward roles. Cause you yeah. know, one of them could have stepped up and been like, oh, I'm going to take like that same like role or, or something, or something so like that. No. Oh. And they did, they picked the, they picked the parts where they thought they were appropriate for, which is good from a directorial yeah. standpoint. They didn't yes. were arrogant enough to make the yeah. movie all about Cause, them. Cause they could have completely ruined the movie by not like casting somebody as charismatic as Sam Rockwell and been yes. like, oh, I'm going to take the role. Um, Sam Rockwell was very charismatic. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad. Thank you, directors. Thank you, screenwriters. If you ever see this, um, for not <laughs> five years later, for for <laughs> not casting Michael Sarah as Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> like, here, here. This is we're totally gonna, something he would do. Yeah, it? yeah. It, we're now in the era of Michael Sarah movies without Michael Sarah because he's too old. <laughs> You know, it's probably because he was too busy with this is the end. <laughs> wow. I mean, can you imagine just Michael Sarah like at the water park and just like That's totally that, yeah, yeah, totally. I can uh, see that. Jesus, now that's all I can think about. <laughs> I wanna start categorizing movies as Michael Sarah movies from now. It's not a bad idea. I wanna actually. make I wanna make that into a kind of a term. <laughs> What's that? Oh? Well, we're gonna copyright the shit out of it now, yeah. and yes. uh, so that way, when that kicks off, we can start actually get making money, <laughs> which would be nice because we've made from my, the last time I checked one dollar and thirty three cents. Yeah, monetized yeah. YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. Anyway, uh, every journey begins with a single step, and this is why we need. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing we do later. And that is not a part of the review. No, it is not. Although we're still talking about it because. As many people know, you get off topic, and I've gotten quite a few complaints about this, but you know what? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to flip off your audience? Because, well, then I have, well, first off, people who complain about this have not made it this far. So <laughs> I, I can safely assume that, then, that they are not watching this right now. So, you know what? It's not going to affect anybody. <laughs> and second off, those comments kind of piss me off because, like, well, I'll actually take it back. There's one that was very polite about it. Oh. I, I will give one, most or not. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll ask you about that specific one later. Okay. But yeah, back to the movie. Um, just solid movie. Reminded me of things like the kind of same vibe as Juno. Mm. Yes. Um, what actually. was the other one that Steve Carell was in with the with the VW bus? Uh, Little Miss Little Sunshine. Miss Sunshine. Yes. Yeah. Reminded me of kind of coming-of-age films like that. Another coming-of-age film that doesn't have as much... Uh, as much buzz as like Little Miss Sunshine, a uh, Thumbsucker. If you've ever I've seen, seen that. that one, though. excellent. I haven't movie. seen that either. I remember hearing about it a while back. Oh, it's just—it's got a really good heart. It's got a good sense of humor. It is a very well-written screenplay, and it's just very well acted. I mean, there's a lot of fun scenes in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of very funny jokes. A, uh, a lot of smart, subtle. I, a top-notch performance is really. I thought the climax, if I have like one little kind of nitpicky complaint, it's like the intro is a bit rough with the cliches, and uh, I had a bit of issue with, not, not, I thought the climax was a bit kind of awkward choosing for climax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it. I, uh, okay, mm -hmm. What it is for context, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to cut you off there, Sarah. It's fine, go ahead. Uh, is that the, there's a big legendary thing, that very like, how do you pass someone on the water slide? Oh, we, we can't tell you that. It's a legend. We can mm -hmm. all, it's like, what happens in the tube stays in the tube. Only one person's ever done it. Of course, no one's ever actually done it. And the very end of the movie, uh, after the blowout scene, they say, okay, we're, we're leaving because we just can't take it here anymore or whatever the case is. And uh, they start driving back. They stop at a gas station right outside the water park. And the kid kind of freaks out and just uh, runs. Duncan. Uh, Duncan, whatever. Uh, runs out to the water park at full speed to say goodbye. And then it's like, no, uh, goes on Steve Rockwell. Uh, what was this character's name? Owen. Owen. Uh, yep, that was it. Sam Rockwell. Uh, Sam Rockwell. <laughs> Sam Rockwell. Did I call him Steve? Yes, you did. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, anyway. 
So it, it's like, okay, I'm gonna pass Sam Rockwell on the slide. We're gonna do this there, and like everyone crowds around. They call him Pop and Lock because of a very awkward dancing scene uh, yes. earlier in the movie. That's the scene in particular. Like the crowd love that scene. I don't really it. care for that scene but, to be honest. But okay, you take the crowd like that we had the first time I saw it, like twice that. Wow. wow. See, I don't really like that Maybe, scene to be honest. Sad. I felt that was kind of pushing the awkward thing a little too far. Because, like, at that point, like, we've established he's an awkward character. This one like, kind of tried to reaffirm it, and I felt like it was pushing it a little but, too much. But I liked it, though, because it was, like, not only was he awkward, because the dancing thing, like, he his, uh, whatever his... It's white guy dancing. No, but, like... The, the white boy um, shuffle. He, he was trying to do that at the at his house when, like, his mom and his mom's friends were getting him into it, and he just wasn't into it. But now, like, he had to impress his <laughs> yeah, new boss. Because he, he's being grinded by his mom. I no, be he's being grinded by the other woman. Oh, yeah, Amanda but, Pete. But, uh... Odyssey here in this movie, but... Yeah, then later, but then later he's like, oh man, he's in front of his boss and all that stuff, because he, so he kind of had to play along a little more, and he mm -hmm. gets the acceptance of the kids. Yeah. Was which so is cool, like, that That was like a whole, like, turning he, point. He he showed that he didn't give up. I guess, yeah. and like, I don't know, I got the, the crowd reaction is a little bit unrealistic. I would think everyone would just, mo like, laugh at the crap out of him more than applaud, but... Probably. Yeah. But you know what, it's an indie movie. It was, so. it was like, starting the, the series where, like, there was all these moments where it's like, oh, yeah, he's, like, super cool now. The other one is when he's uh, eating cereal, and his... Oh, yeah, it's like... He, he winked yeah, at he his, winked his, his stepsister. And, and then that was that was great. <laughs> I, I thought the sister was a bit wasted, in my opinion, like the stepsister. Yeah. Because, yeah, uh, like, mostly because, like, so there's a plot part where, uh, Duncan and the hot chick that he awkwardly first, uh, sedu seduces to the movie go out like on a date on the water on the water park and they come back and she's like where were you you ditched me oh hmm and of course because they're like well I have my own issues too but we're never gonna talk about them so we're just gonna assume that I have them and I'm gonna walk inside well, no because she broke up with the boyfriend that was the issue and, uh, and, and it it bugged me that uh, sh sh it's clear that she's going down the path of a juvenile delinquent uh, because she s stole uh, oh, yeah. on on her way out, out the door with her father standing right there completely oblivious. And she did that twice or three times actually. At least. Yeah, yeah. and then of course is the part where it's like she's in the kitchen and then she t uh, sees the mother scrubbing the land and she takes it and she starts scrubbing it like my subplot is complete. Because <laughs> <laughs> we never see like she never says anything after that. That's yeah. true actually. <laughs> it's like that was like my subplot's complete please move on to other characters. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, she is probably the least interesting character in the movie. Yeah. Like, even yeah. like the neighbors of the guy who owns the boat was more interesting than her. She's the most serious. <laughs> the kid with the, I'm sorry. The kid with the eye patch. That the poor mother of like the that child is fucked beyond all reason. Yes. Yeah. But I know families like that. Like that that mother Not. character was so dead on with like just type. Uh, there's there's types of people out there for every stereotype. Yeah, there is one exactly and rule. like that hit home and I was just like Oh, I know those people right there when every with every line She was talking to the kid with the eye patch and it was just like because he has a cross eye So he has like one eye going straight and his eye going like this way So of course it would let you a great joke by Sam uh, Sam Rockwell. Yes First like are you kidding me if I had that I'd be fucking with people all the time He didn't use the f-word is a PG-13. Yes uh, <laughs> So it was like, I was just like, can you look me in the eye and tell me that? It's like, it was, <laughs> like I said, Sam Rockwell is charming in this movie. Like, Very. It captures the charming, the charm of the actor in a way that Iron Man 2 did not. Yeah. Well, he was kind of playing a douche in Iron Man 2. Well, that too, but the problem is a doucheness just eventually got in the way of anything interesting about him. <laughs> <laughs> another thing, uh, Back to sunglasses. another point that was completely spot on, and I, like I said, I know people like this because I know, I know a lot of people. Um, this was, and this is, this was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. It was very subtle, but like, I, I loved it okay. when they were at the beach and the, uh, all the teenage girls were like out sunbathing and she goes to the, uh, to the boyfriend. She goes, honey, I want to go in the water. And he's like, go in the water. I'm playing football. And she goes, he's acting weird. <laughs> Yeah. So spot on with like 16, 17 year old girls now. <laughs> that was so great. Present company excluded, women. <laughs> Thank you for the, the preface. <laughs> You're welcome. E even if you were just saying it to cover your ass. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I just like, and she's like, how she's like, he, well, he's acting weird. Except the people on my team, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth knowing in case they've actually made it this far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Lauren or Lisa don't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs>
Aha. Uh, nice way to cover your ass. <laughs> gotta cover my bases in these things. That's why I sound as cool as possible with sunglasses on. Um, but, oh, there's one scene in particular I liked that made me laugh was the part where the three douchebag kids get stuck in the slide. Yeah. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was pretty damn funny. It what was. happens is... Uh, they decide to bum rush the slide while like the Duncan's distracted because he's in charge of making sure people pass in the water, and so they all bum rush and they'll go three going at once and they get stuck halfway through the slide. So uh, and a big black guy. Uh, yeah, because Sam Rockwell's response is to go out there and say, "I need a hero." Oh, this was, was great. <laughs> I was so tempted to continue finishing the song. <laughs> and what, how's the rest of it go? I'm holding out for, for a hero, hero t tonight. He's got to be fast, and he's got to be hero. strong, and he's got to be fresh from the fight. <laughs> it's like, to, touch, t no, nobody? Oh, okay. Nobody knows that Bonnie Tyler song? How about the remake? There actually was uh, a remake that, that Fru Fru did for the Shrek 2 soundtrack. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then they got the, like, the big fat black guy to go yes. over there and uh, he knock him out, and I was that was a lot of fun. Like, it, that, Sorry, go on. Is it like uh, no? Go ahead, Evan. That was such a great, like, funny scene, and then that was great because it shows like, oh, his carelessness with the rules, and then that led to like the big fight, which you weren't necessarily expecting. Yeah, because they with, between him and his like girlfriend, it was like, whoa, kind of, sort of girlfriend. They don't really strictly say they're in a relationship, although it might as well be. Uh, yeah. To uh, played from that woman who was in what was that movie called? Uh, it was one of she was in. A, she was in a lot of different movies. Was it Knocked Up? No, no not Knocked no. Up. No. Uh, away with me? Something like that, yeah. Uh, they were in a f our flirtation ship. Someone will c correct me in the comments, I can almost guarantee it. Uh, so, not a full on relationship, but they were interested in each other and they had known each other for a few years. Yeah, so it's like, and of course, Lee is like, I can't take this anymore. You're acting like unprofessional douchebag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, I'm done with this. Actually, do your damn job or I'm gone, pretty much. Mm hmm. And of course, you know, it, and again, it shows that like, characters have good heart. This movie just has a good heart to it. Very yeah. much so. And it, even though it was very endearing. Yeah, and like although it's had cliches that's been explored before, it still does it well. Exactly. And yes. it makes it, it still makes it interesting. So like in that respect, I really enjoyed it. Um, that's about all I have to say about it. Unless anyone's got anything else to add. See it. I recommend it. Um, I wear my sunglasses at night. Um, yeah, Patrick, by the buzz. I liked it, and I fully approve of this movie. I hope you get to see it. It's, like I said, I saw it a month ago, or three weeks ago, in a preview screening. Got great reviews and great uh, approval from the audience. I'm not sure why they're going with this staggered release, because the release official release date was uh, July 5th. Which was perfect. Like Fourth of July weekend would have been great. Fourth of July but movie. But we're in a major market. Like there's no screenings in San Francisco That's... or San Jose for it. It's they're delaying it. It's worth noting that on the Fourth of July weekend we had Despicable Me Too and Lone Ranger. Mm -hmm. Just... So two Steve Carell movies, right? Well, my point is, like, Lo uh, oh, Lo yeah. Lo Lo back would have gotten easily lost in that shuffle. Yeah, you're right. So mm -hmm. that's probably why they delayed it. Yeah, delayed that it makes a sense. week or two. Yeah, because like those two big movie releases, you can, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was guy really. I thought it was a really good movie. Uh, but probably best out there right now. Easily. Um, Easily. We did get one trailer. Uh, I, baggage claim. Yes, I'm. I'm down to see it because we, because we saw it the trailer fucking twice. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I missed it the first time. I want to see it. The, I want to see that movie. Because I know this because this is when I knew we had a good audience. Was uh, we got the first time because we were trying to find everyone, so I guess they just started playing the movie <laughs> for some reason, even though all the lights were on. Yes. And we got like halfway through the trailer for the res. Oh crap! Turn that off. And it was like, and pretty much as soon as the lights went down, the music movie started. Like, do we have to watch the fucking Tyler Perry trailer? Again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, like so two people, um, one behind me, one next to me, was saying that. Yes. <laughs> I fist bumped the second woman <laughs> the next nice. day because like it's, it's not a Tyler Perry movie, but it might as well be because it's got an all black cast and there's only one white dude who's gay. So. Yeah, it's it's basically an African American rom com. Yeah, which so. I'm down to see. I don't know why. Because because <laughs> he's Patrick and, and and he likes everything, unless you can can find out what he doesn't like. Horror movies. Kryptonite found. <laughs> it looks like shit. I think it's really the best way to describe it. It looks stereotypical. Which means it looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> You're just a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> On that note, I think it's... Uh, I gotta do this dramatically. I think it's time we... close the case. Now... 
dramatically take them off. But uh, yeah, my hands are behind my back. It's... You fail me, Patrick. It's okay. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> if you would turn.